Excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, I wish all of you a wonderful good afternoon, good morning, good night, wherever you are. Uh, my name is Kai Betke, and I'm the Director of External Relations uh, of the United Nations Industrial Development Organization uh, based in Vienna. Uh, I welcome you very warmly and very heartily on behalf of UNIDO, uh, and I would like all of you to thank you for participating in this important conference on women in industry and innovation which is organized in collaboration with the UN Women, uh, the FAO, and with essential support uh, by the government of Italy. In these difficult times which we all experience uh, of uncertainty and ever-changing economic realities for women specifically across the globe, this conference represents a platform of opportunities to take stock of the achievements of the Beijing Platform for Action and the Agenda 2030 for Sustainable Development and what we try to do is jointly craft innovative solutions in order to support the creation of an enabling environment that promotes women's economic empowerment, which more than ever is an important element for the social well-being well -being of all of us. So once again, I thank you very much for your participation. It's a pleasure having you here. And we will now have uh, a list of high-level speakers of utmost importance who are sending us their messages. And I'm very proud and happy to begin uh, our list with His Excellency, Mr. Lee Young, the Director General of UNIDO, uh, who will now deliver his opening statement. So you have the floor. Excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, it is my great pleasure to join you and the esteemed speakers of this opening session as I officially launch the UNIDO conference women in industry and innovation. 2020 is a significant milestone in many ways. It marks the 25th anniversary of the Beijing Declaration and the Platform for Action, which is a crucial pillar for the promotion of gender equality and women's empowerment. 2020 also marks 10 years to a deadline to achieve the 2030 Agenda and the Sustainable Development Goals which have put gender equality at the their core. Just two weeks ago, we also celebrated the UN Women's 10th anniversary. But the 2020 has also been a year of reckoning as the world faces enormous health, social, economic challenges caused by COVID-19 which have only amplified the existing gender inequalities. The pandemic has served as a deafening reminder that although industrialization can significantly promote structural change, generate employment, and facilitate a more efficient use of resources, its benefits have historically not been enjoyed equally by all of society, especially women. During this pandemic, women as workers, business owners, and the entrepreneurs are struggling to access financial rescue packages, credit, and unemployment benefits. Businesses in the manufacturing sector are particularly hard hit as factories were brought into a standstill. A recent UNIDO study found that 49% of surveyed women-led enterprises had to temporarily suspend their activities due to pandemic, coupled with order cancellations from domestic and international markets, difficulties accessing raw materials and the finance. The survey shows that the resilience of women entrepreneurs, their employees, and the communities within which they operate have been profoundly tested. Excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, unfavorable conditions and the structural barriers faced by women in industry predate the pandemic, which unfortunately is exacerbating these hardships. This conference is therefore a timely reminder of how much remains to be done to achieve a world where the women and men lead equally participate in and benefit from inclusive and sustainable industrial development. How does UNIDO respond to these challenges? 
UNIDO is committed to implementing programs that challenge the discrimination faced by women and the girls, whatever their background and identity. The 2020-2023 UNIDO strategy for gender equality and the empowerment of women provides a framework for both our organizational practices and our programmatic work. One of UNIDO's flagship initiatives on gender equality is promoting women's economic empowerment for inclusive and sustainable development in the MENA region funded by the government of Italy, which supports this conference. By increasing access of women to productive resources, creating enabling conditions for women's entrepreneurship and job creation, education, vocational training, and the women's leadership, promoting women's agency in climate change adaptation and mitigation, and building the knowledge and the capacity for gender responsive industrial development. UNIDO is helping to create a world where both men and women can thrive. Achieving this vision means focusing on concrete steps. How can we harness the power of entrepreneurship in value chain development? How can we ensure that transition towards the circular economies does not leave women behind? How can we meaningfully empower women through ICTs and digital technologies? This conference will serve as a forum for exchange of best practices where the policymakers, practitioners, and the women and men entrepreneurs from across the world can engage in constructive dialogue where the strategic and business linkages are created and the lessons learned can be shared for rapid implementation. The fourth industrial revolution is ripe with promise. Let us all work together to ensure that women benefit equally by participating and shaping and pushing the frontiers of industry and innovation. We very much thank the general for his statement. And with this, I would uh, heartily like to welcome Her Excellency, Mrs. Emanuela Del Rey, Vice Minister of Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation uh, of Italy, our main cooperation partner in the government. And we're very happy to welcome her. I would like to ask her to address the audience. Director General Li Yong. Dear ministers, excellencies, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, dear friends. Over time, a widespread consensus has gathered on gender equality. Data and research show that we cannot reach the 2030 Agenda's SDGs without unlocking women's power and energy. Women are, and will continue to be, powerful drivers for development. When men and women become equal, economies grow faster. Fewer people remain in poverty and overall well-being increases. When women are empowered to provide an income, accumulate assets and increase their economic security, they improve industrial capacity and spur the economic growth by creating new jobs. Therefore, the advancing role of women in economic decision making has positive effects on sustainable economic development. Women entrepreneurs are the new engines for inclusive and sustainable industrial growth. They are the rising stars of economies in developing countries, especially in times of crisis. Gender equality is a top priority of the Italian development cooperation strategy. While we keep fighting, gender discrimination, we must go further towards a full expression of women's role in the entrepreneurial context and leadership. This is the only way to an inclusive and strong economic growth truly needed in this unprecedented construct, contraction of economic opportunities. The Italian Development Cooperation is indeed deeply committed to promoting women's rights and empowerment. 
We do so by targeting rural development and by supporting the private sector, in particular by guaranteeing women's participation in the agricultural work workforce, by increasing their access to financial services and in encouraging their leadership. Italy strongly supported two projects in particular by the Mediterranean Agronomic Institute that have significantly increased women's participation in economic development in the MENA region and in Tunisia, thus improving their empowerment through association and organization. We contributed as well to a concessional loan to the Ethiopian government dis designed to develop inclusive agricultural supply chains and to a project aimed at empowering women in agribusiness and fishing wa value chains in Sudan in collaboration with UN Women. Those projects are mindset changers because they focus on enabling the environment to be gender responsive and open up areas of business where women are usually denied access. The promotion of women's empowerment will be a relevant line of action of the incoming G20 Italian presidency, which will focus on a resilient, inclusive and sustainable economic recovery from the pandemic. Empowering women and addressing gender inequalities is vital for an effective recovery from the current crisis. In <laughs> fact, women who are often vital first responders to crisis and rebuilders in their societies are on the front line of the fight against COVID-19, representing more than 70% of health workers. No nonetheless, they are underrepresented in decision-making roles, also in the health sector. As we recover from this crisis, we have the opportunity to be transformative and develop more inclusive and resilient societies. In order to restore strong and sustainable growth, we should therefore seize this opportunity by relaunching and reconfirming our commitment to promoting women's rights and empowerment. With the slogan, we mean it, Italy reaffirms its commitment to women's economic empowerment. We invite other participants to do the same. Let me conclude by affirming that gender equality is not just for women, it is for everybody. We cannot promote change in the world if only half of us are engaged. Without women's skills, leadership, resilience and creativity in Italy, in Europe and in the entire world, recovery will not be possible. Encouraging the full participation of women in public life and in business, it is not only essential to build back better, but it is a powerful game changer for the future. We have a huge responsibility towards the new generations. The future starts now with every little girl and little boy. Thank you very much. I very much thank uh, <coughs> Excellency Vice Minister Alre for her contribution and as well uh, again the Italian government for also helping us to make this um, conference possible. Uh, with this uh, I would like to introduce the next uh, of our key organizers is His Excellency uh, Mr. Ju Dong Ju, the Director General of the FIO. Uh, Director General, please, the floor is yours. This important event in collaboration with the government of Italy, UN Women, and FL. Eradicating hunger and malnutrition is one of the greatest challenges in our time. To achieve this, rural women's contributions and leadership as farmers, traders, and entrepreneurs will be key. Women comprise 37% 37 of agricultural employment globally, and in low-income countries, they account for 48%. Yet, less than 15% of agricultural landholders worldwide are women. Globally, women own more than 30% of registered businesses, although their businesses tend to be smaller and less profitable. 
There are more women in low-wage jobs, often without social benefits. While more and more women are opening bank accounts, a global gender gap of 7% points still exists. This has not changed since 2011. Strengthening women's role in agriculture, enabling them to reach their full potential, can make our food system more efficient and effective, lifting millions of people out of poverty and food insecurity. This is why I established a women's committee at the FAO to empower female colleagues and to build a bridge to efforts by members to improve the situation of women and girls. Gender equality is mainstreamed across all FAO's programs and functions which we implement with our partners. Together with UNIDO and UN Women, for example, we implement a program called Promoting Women's Empowerment for Inclusive Sustainable Industrial Development. Through this program, we provide crucial assistance to female producers in Algeria, Egypt, Jordan, Lebanon, Morocco, Tunis, in the uh, Palestinian territories and others. The COVID-19 pandemic has reminded us that we must continue investing in rural women and ensure that the gender equality is central to our economic policies. Effort stands ready to play its part in strengthening gender equality in agriculture, supporting rural women to realize their rights and dreams. Only then will we reach our common goal of eradicating poverty and end the hunger. I wish you a very successful conference. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. General, uh, for your statement. And I also thank the FAO for being with us in this conference and making that happen. Uh, following statement of Mr. Ju, uh, we will now hear from Dr. Moes Durait, the UN Women's Regional Director Interim for the Arab States, who will deliver a message on behalf of the UN Women Ex-Directors, Mrs. Fonsiri Malambo. Please, sir, you have the floor. Greetings. Distinguished representatives of the Italian Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Development Cooperation, Distinguished colleagues from UNIDO, FAO, and intergovernmental organizations. Dear partners and friends, it is my honor to greet you on behalf of the Executive Director of UN Women, Fumzili Malambu Nekshuka, at the opening of this conference to promote women as drivers of industry and innovation. This year, 2020, is the 25th anniversary year of the adoption of the Beijing Platform for Action. There is still much work to be done to ensure that women benefit equally from progress and from development. During the current pandemic, women have borne the brunt of its adverse impact. We are now at risk of regressing on the advances that have been made particularly in women's access to employment. Globally, only four out of 10 women participate in the labor market, where they make 77 cents for every dollar earned by men. Meanwhile, women carry at least two and a half times more unpaid care work and are overrepresented in the informal economy where they may be subjected to exploitation and abuse. Around the world, most of the 3.6 billion people who remain offline are women. Similarly, women account for 56% of those financially excluded from the digital economy. With only 10 years left to achieve the 2030 Sustainable Development Goals, women are still underrepresented in leadership positions in industry and in the field of innovation, while investments in the care economy are lagging. This conference is timely as it shines a spotlight on the very issues that need to be tackled in order to support women as drivers of innovation and industry. The COVID-19 pandemic has accelerated the pace of digitization. Online services can be life-saving for women facing violence 
Mobile phones can be used to access essential cash, tra cash transfer programs. And with sufficient access, online education can ensure that girls and boys do not have to drop out of school. However, we must acknowledge that the benefits of innovation and technology are not enjoyed by women and men equally. We are determined not to repeat patterns of gender bias and discrimination that have rendered innovation blind to the specific needs of 50% of the population. Instead, we will ensure that women's needs are appropriately addressed by having women seated at the head of the table when technological solutions are sought. Ladies and gentlemen, the marked inequality of access to decent work, absence of investment in the care economy, and the lack of women in leadership roles in both the public and private sector has been highlighted by the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic and the consequent global economic crisis. We must ensure that the leadership role of women is supported and their contribution to industry and innovation fully recognized in order to rebuild a global economy that is more equitable, inclusive, and sustainable. The importance of harnessing technology and innovation to achieve gender equality and inclusive development has never been more clear, nor more urgent. In closing, I would like to quote UN Women's Executive Director, Madame Fumzili Malambo Nekshuka. She stated, COVID-19 has been the most disruptive global force in a generation. And where there is disruption, there is the potential to rebuild, reimagine, and create a radically better world. End of quote. The future of work is here and we need to act now. On behalf of UN Women, I wish you a very fruitful discussion over the coming days that will see the emergence of innovative approaches that can enable us to build back better on the basis of a more sustainable and resilient economy that leaves no one behind. Thank you. I thank very much uh, Dr. Dorite for his contribution. And with this, uh, uh, you now heard the contributions of all the co-organizers actually, and becoming, in fact, and I'm very happy and delighted to announce uh, a number of uh, contributions which we're having uh, from uh, excellencies at the government level, uh, who are not only promoting gender equality, uh, on their very own, but role models for them very selves. And with this, I have the enormous pleasure and honor uh, to announce uh, the participation of Her Excellency, Mrs. Marta Lucia Ramirez, the Vice President of the Republic of Colombia, who now has the floor. It's a pleasure to participate in this online international conference on women in industry and innovation. I want to thank the United Nations Industrial Development Organization the Government of Italy, the Food and Agriculture Organization, and the United Nations Women for organizing this landmark conference. This meeting comes in a very important a moment. We are experiencing a systematic changes in the global economy. At the same time, women are disproportionately affected by COVID-19 pandemic. Government should seize this opportunity to implement better policies and doing so should include efforts to integrate and empower the half of the world's population that has always been discriminated against enhancing their innovation skills, their access to capital, and all their entrepreneurship opportunities. If women and men around the world participated equally as entrepreneurs, global GDP could ultimately rise by approximately 3% to 6% according to the Boston Consulting Group. In Latin America, for example, female labor income contributes in a 30% of the reduction of extreme poverty. Creating opportunities for women is worth it. 
Three key areas of international economy are being challenged. First, the degree of fragmentation and the length of the value chains. Second, the geographical spread of value added. And third, the governance choices of multinational enterprises. Ladies and gentlemen, let's take this opportunity to enter or to intensify participation in global value chains. Countries will need to increase their investment promotion efforts. Additionally, countries will need to address the technological challenges arising from the fourth industrial revolution. Why not empower women in these areas? Women are at a relative disadvantage compared to men due to economic and social constraints. If we do nothing to protect the productive life of women, the result will be devastating. Women have less access to technology worldwide. 60% of women in developing countries don't have access to new technologies. In Colombia, for example, 19% of women between 15 and 49 years old have not overcome the digital gap, and this is double in the case of rural women. For this reason, our government is working to close this gap, empowering women in the use and appropriation of uh, technologies of information. This initiative is called for a TIC Mujer. It aims to promote technology among women as a means to overcome poverty and strengthen women's entrepreneurships. We are also working in these kind of houses of mujeres empoderadas, houses to promote this empower of women in the rural areas and also in the small and medium-sized cities and municipalities. In these houses, we are working in order to give a training for women in IT, and we are also working in order to uh, close this technological gap uh, for women. So we are very focused not only in the large cities like Bogota, Medellin, or Cali, but also in the small and medium-sized uh, cities. Second, we have a smaller proportion of women uh, who have these STEM skills that I mentioned bef uh, before previously. The OECD data shows that only 11.9% of women worldwide enter a STEM career versus 28.5% of men. It means a big gap. Since the pandemic is accelerating digital transformation, this will result in more women losing their jobs as they are less prepared for this uh, transformation. Last year, in my office, in the vice presidency, and also with a, a partnership with our uh, secretary of a, a women equality in Colombia, we led this Wisdom International mission in Colombia uh, with the key recommendations for action regarding the need to scale up programs to attract more women into these STEAM careers. Third, uh, women are about half as likely as men to begin new companies. They are more likely to work in non-capital intensive sectors with lower potential for generating a high income. Ladies and gentlemen, there are 24 million women in the country representing 51% of our entire population. Nine million women were employed at the end of 2019. Of these women, 5.4 million work in these uh, sectors, which are very sensitive, which are very risky because of the pandemic. But more than that, there are so many women working in informal conditions. And we have set out the goal for the next two years of accompanying at least a million, one million female to become entrepreneurs in the process of creating sustainable, scalable, and profitable business that contribute to job creation in our country. The objective is to coordinate all government portfolios and the private sector initiatives towards concrete actions that create formal jobs and provide stability to women entrepreneurs and their employees. 
Last June 4th, this strategy was launched, and for the first time in history, under my leadership, and of course with the President's support, in adherence to the guidelines formulated by the Presidential Council of Equality for Women in Colombia, we create this trust to promote this financial support and technical assistance to support entrepreneurship and business formalization for women in Colombia. It will support working women, women-owned companies, and entrepreneurial new initiatives of women. It is necessary for countries and the multilateral and financial international organizations, the regional integration groups, and the international organizations competent in the field of development and labor to join forces aimed to promote entrepreneurship among vulnerable women through initiatives such as building capacity in ICT, managerial and specific to sectors of production of goods and services where a, a, there is a, a greater female participation. Second, the introduction of product services from companies led by women in productive clusters or in global value chains. Uh, rewarding companies led by women, uh, we are working very much in order to increase their participation in public procurement. And also, all this formalization of employment for women is, uh, for us, a clear priority. Investing in women and respecting their human rights is the best way to lift communities, companies, and countries, and to achieve this 2030 uh, Agenda for Sustainable Development. The longer we put off gender equality, the more we lose. Uh, these are just a few examples of the commitment of the Colombian government to women's economic empowerment. Through these actions, we say to Colombian women, we mean it. Mm -hmm. And now, which will be uh, your contribution to empower uh, women in the industry and innovation? I think this is a question that all of you have to do every single day. Thank you very much. Very much thank uh, Vice President Mills for her uh, uh, contribution. And with this, uh, uh, we come to the uh, statement of uh, Her Excellency Mrs. Amina Mohammed, United Nations Deputy Secretary General and the Chair of the United Nations uh, Sustainable Development Group. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I thank you, Nido, for inviting me to this important conference. Women and girls are being disproportionately affected by COVID-19 crisis. Women's high levels of participation in the informal sector, as well as their employment in critically affected sectors, have made them even more vulnerable. Women constitute 39% of the workers in the manufacturing sector overall, but they represent up to 75% of the workforce in the sectors characterized by low wages and long working hours. Firms in these branches also have the highest representation of women-owned or women-managed businesses. As business had to close or restrict their operations in the aftermath of COVID-19, women suppliers, often self-employed, have been forced to halt their activities. This must change. The world's response to COVID-19 provides an opportunity to do just that. From accessing financial rescue packages, credit and unemployment benefits, to removing barriers for women to perform higher skilled and better paid jobs. We know what are the solutions and the tools at our disposal. It is time for action. At the UN, we have developed a framework for the socio-economic response to COVID-19, which is firmly anchored in the 2030 Agenda and Sustainable Development Goals. The framework has five key dimensions. Essential health services, social protection and basic services, protecting jobs and support to small and medium-sized enterprises and informal sector workers, financing and social cohesion and community-led resilience. Encouraging results are emerging in the work of our UN country teams. Women micro and small entrepreneurs are receiving unconditional cash transfers via digital wallets. Digital payments are being made to first responders, many of them women crucial in countries with low numbers of bank accounts and high rates of mobile phone coverage. We are also seeing the innovative use of digital and other forms of remote learning. We must use these examples to inform and stimulate investments on a much larger scale. 
None of these actions will be successful if we fail to address the structural barriers to gender equality and women's empowerment. That means supporting women's leadership, cultivating co-responsibility between men and women over domestic and care work. It means using the reality of COVID-19 to raise awareness of the value of roles that are underpaid and have traditionally rested on women. It means removing hurdles that prevent the full involvement of women in economic activities. And it means ensuring financing opportunities and improved conditions for women entrepreneurs and those who are self-employed in higher value markets. Funding will be critical. The Initiative on Financing for Development in the Era of COVID-19 and Beyond, led by the Prime Ministers of Canada and Jamaica and the Secretary General, has led to the creation of discussion groups who will be providing recommendations on critical issues, including external finance, remittances, jobs, sustainability, liquidity, debt vulnerability and illicit financial flows. We must overcome the pandemic by leaping forward with our eyes on the future that we want for people and planet. I trust that your discussions today will help us get closer to this goal. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, thank uh, uh, Mrs. Mohammed for her contribution and uh, highlighting once again the importance uh, from the UN point of view to, to really uh, support women's empowerment. This, in fact, is the framework within which we're operating this this conference. And with this, I'm very happy uh, to uh, announce the presentation of His Excellency Mr. Khalid al Aseli, Minister of National Economy of the State of Palestine. Excellency Mr. Leung, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, I'm pleased to be representing State of Palestine and addressing the excellencies and everyone participating at the UNIDO conference, Women in Industry and Innovation. I start by thanking His Excellency, the Director General, Mr. Lee Young, for his innovation invitation to join this conference. Women's economic empowerment is fundamental to realize women's rights and gender equality. The acquisition of knowledge and skills, as well as participation of women and inter, as inter, entrepreneurs and in the labor force on an equal footing with men are crucial to ensure their inclusive and sustainable social and economic development. The government of Palestine has put in place a set of policies and tools to ensure the increase of women participation in the labor force in Palestine into a new level, increasing their participation from the current level of 17%. Although we have women participation in government, private sector leadership, and, lo and local communities, Incre increasing on continuous basis, we are taking all measures to ensure women and empowered to assume their full potential engagement into all sorts of productive sectors for the development of socio-economic standard in Palestine. The current challenges faced by women in the wake of the COVID-19 outbreak only confirm the importance of effectively empowering women and strengthening the ecosystem within which they can operate in order to improve their resilience and reduce the economic shocks and consequences. In fact, in Palestine, we are very proud the Minister of Health leading the government response to the COVID-19 pandemic is a woman. During the pandemic, surveys were conducted to measure the impact of the ongoing crisis of COVID-19 on women-led MSEs in Palestine. On conclusion, 95% of Palestinian women reported that their businesses are being negatively impacted by the pandemic. 27% of women's business were shut down. 
73% of women reported that they could only sustain their business businesses during the current situation from one to four months. 53% of women reported that they are considering laying off their employees. In our efforts face the challenges created by the COVID-19 crisis, my ministry continue to work closely with UNIDO and all partners and stakeholders on emergency policy, policy intervention and rapid technical response to ensure proper supply of critical needs during the pandemic and provide early assistance packages to industry, including a special fund that was created to support women-led businesses survival throughout this crisis. We strongly believe that industrialization can significantly promote structural change, generate employment, and facilitate more efficient use of resources. We are actually going to integrating together with Japan and UNIDO, the one of its kind creative fashion design center in the next days. This center will provide its services at the national level, noting that 85% of its beneficiaries are Palestinian women designers and entrepreneurs in Palestine and diaspora. Ministry of National Economy, UNIDO and the partners continue to support the and the Naples women led private sector and SMEs through several interventions, including the extension of technical support for the repurposing of industry and expansion of production capacities for key sectors, including through digitization. We look forward to supporting the new value chain selected through this regional project, ICT, and dates at the national level and position intervention to particularly engage women into supporting further development of national value chain. We thank you again and look forward to engaging in the conference activities and receive its recommendations. Thank you very much, President of the Second Minister of National Economy of the State of Palestine. And with this, I have the enormous pleasure to announce to you the participation of the President of the European Parliament his Excellency Mr. David Sassoli. Signore e signori, grazie innanzitutto per l'invito ad aprire questa vostra importante conferenza internazionale dell'Unido. Il 2020 è stato considerato da molti un anno di trasformazione per promuovere l'uguaglianza di genere e l'emancipazione delle donne in tutto il mondo. Tuttavia, con la pandemia Covid-19, i risultati ottenuti negli ultimi decenni per quanto riguarda il rafforzamento economico delle donne e l'uguaglianza di genere rischiano di essere messi in crisi, addirittura vanificati, perché si stanno intensificando le disuguaglianze preesistenti, evidenziando le fragilità in ambito sociale, politico, economico. Il Parlamento europeo è pienamente consapevole del fatto che le donne devono essere parte integrante del processo decisionale per l'adozione e la revoca delle misure in caso di crisi, nonché per la progettazione, l'adozione e l'attuazione di piani di ripresa in modo da tenere pienamente e adeguatamente conto delle loro specifiche esigenze. Indietro non dobbiamo tornare, un'effettiva parità di genere è la condizione essenziale se vogliamo avere successo nell'affrontare le grandi sfide attuali e le nuove sfide che si presentano. L'Europa è al crocevia delle transizioni 
eh, quella verde, quella industriale, eh, la sfida digitale, deve guidare la transizione verso un pianeta più sano, un nuovo mondo digitale senza lasciare nessuno indietro. Pertanto dobbiamo approfittare della ripresa per promuovere l'istruzione delle giovani donne, aumentare la loro presenza e il contributo delle donne nei settori dell'intelligenza artificiale, del digitale, delle scienze, della tecnologia, dell'ingegneria, della matematica, così come nella green economy. La digitalizzazione è la chiave per l'inclusione delle donne nell'industria e per costruire la loro resilienza. Il Parlamento europeo sarà particolarmente attento a garantire che qualsiasi ulteriore regolamentazione sull'intelligenza artificiale non aumenti le disuguaglianze. La tecnologia deve sostenere il processo decisionale umano e non comprometterlo. Il Parlamento europeo chiede che la futura strategia dell'Unione per la parità dei sessi ponga fine a tutte le forme di discriminazione che le donne affrontano nel mercato del lavoro, quali il divario retributivo, pensionistico, la presenza delle donne nei consigli di amministrazione delle imprese che è davvero ancora troppo poca, la rappresentanza disuguale nelle posizioni decisionali e l'accesso a beni e servizi. L'attuazione anche della compatibilità tra vita familiare e vita lavorativa, un problema che le, tutte le donne affrontano, nonché tutte le strutture e le pratiche discriminatorie di genere. Beh, queste sono le sfide che la nostra agenda hanno messo eh, in chiaro, perché questo è un periodo che può far tornare indietro la presenza delle donne nella vita delle nostre società. Signore e signori, permettetemi di ricordare un punto che mi sta molto a cuore come Presidente del Parlamento europeo. L'Unione deve contribuire a rafforzare i diritti di tutte le donne, soprattutto delle donne più vulnerabili, in tutte le politiche dell'Unione. E se sono e potrebbero esserlo per gli anni a venire le più colpite dalla crisi economica e sociale che stiamo attraversando e naturalmente non dobbiamo consentirlo e non possiamo permettercelo. Un'attenzione particolare dovrebbe essere rivolta a loro in tutti i nostri sforzi di ripresa. Sono orgoglioso di essere il presidente di un'istituzione che ha sempre sostenuto i diritti delle donne ad alta voce e in modo chiaro. Voglio che sappiate che per tutta la durata del mio mandato garantirò un preciso e fermo impegno politico per il rafforzamento dell'uguaglianza di genere e dei diritti delle donne nell'Unione e nel mondo. In questi tempi difficili uniamo le forze per far sì che le disuguaglianze non si aggravino e che la parità tra i sessi diventi una realtà. Il Parlamento europeo è determinato a diventare un leader globale in materia di uguaglianza di genere, ma dobbiamo essere eh, tutti insieme concentrati in questo sforzo comune. Buon lavoro. We thank the President of the European Parliament for his contribution here. And now further to the message of Mr. Sassoli, I'm delighted to introduce His Excellency Mr. Angel Gurria, the Second General of the OECE. Ladies and gentlemen, I am delighted to open this conference on women in industry and innovation, building women's resilience to global challenges and emerging crises. I'd like to thank UNIDO for organizing this important meeting in collaboration with FAO, UN Women, and the Government of Italy. We come together at a particularly difficult time among the plethora of challenges created by COVID-19, this crisis is also exacerbating gender inequalities and the risks of reversing some of the most important progress that we have made on women's empowerment. Two key areas where we have to keep making progress in empowering women are industry and innovation. The participation of women in both areas is crucial and it faces important challenges. The crisis can be particularly damaging for industries in which many women work, such as air travel, tourism, retail activities, 
accommodation, food and beverage. In OECD countries, women represent close to half of employment in the air transport industry, 53% in food and beverage services, 60% in accommodation. Now, some manufacturing industries with strong participation of women are also facing severe disruption. One of the most notable examples is the garment industry, where women represent over three quarters of the workers, ranging from 63% of the workforce in Jordan to 70% in China and 85% in Bangladesh. Now, in many corporations in these and other industries, women are not only often among the lowest paid and the most vulnerable workers, but also they are still grossly underrepresented in senior management positions and in their executive boards. The gender pay gap is still 13% on average in the OECD. Focusing on innovation, we find additional challenges. Women represent only 21% of scientists identified as quote unquote, corresponding authors, a proxy term for leadership in the world of science. And only 17% of scientists earning more than $105,000 per year are women. Governments today have a unique opportunity to build back better by promoting gender equality and implementing a series of key measures that the OECD has been recommending for many years. Let me highlight three. First, women need to be relieved of unpaid care responsibilities. For example, through public child care options and through flexible work arrangements. But also by getting men to take on more of the unpaid work and to take paternity leave, providing easier access to benefits targeted to low income families in particular, single parents who are predominantly women is also crucial to prevent inequalities from widening. Second, addressing gender inequalities in science, technology, engineering and maths, the so-called STEM subjects, will require a strategic and systemic long-term approach. We need policy actions to go beyond gender stereotypes, to avoid digital gaps and discrimination, and to proactively support women in senior positions, especially in male-dominated sectors and in the field of research. And third, given that COVID-19 poses a severe threat to the achievement of gender-related SDGs, it is key to ensure that the data collected on the impact of the pandemic are systematically sex disaggregated. This will help lay gender equalities open or the gender inequalities and facilitate building a strong political commitment to apply a gender perspective when designing policy responses to this crisis. Looking ahead, the OECD will continue to champion women's empowerment through various areas of its work and through various tools, such as the OECD Gender Data Portal, 
the OECD Social Institutions and Gender Index, the so-called SIGI. By the way, the SIGI measures discrimination in 180 countries and documents where it comes from, in many cases, from the laws and regulations. We also have the OECD toolkit for mainstreaming and implementing gender equality, which provides guidelines to implement the OECD recommendation on gender equality in public life. And the quote unquote missing entrepreneurs 2019 report, as well as the OECD small and medium enterprise and entrepreneurship outlook of 2019, which examine inclusive entrepreneurship through a gender lens. And the list goes on. So, dear friends, ladies and gentlemen, fighting for women's rights, for gender equality, is our responsibility to promote more inclusive, sustainable economies, to promote more inclusive, sustainable societies. The OECD is fully dedicated to this important work and to joining forces with UNIDO to ensure that all women on this planet are duly empowered. Thank you. I very much thank uh, His Excellency Mr. Gurria from the OECD for, for this very interesting message. Uh, and with this, I would like uh, to uh, announce our next uh, uh, participation, uh, which is from Her Excellency Mrs. Luz Maria de la Mora, the Under Secretary for Foreign Trade and the Mexican Minister of Economy uh, from Mexico. And a pleasure to have the opportunity to be with you in the United Nations Industrial Development Organization International Conference, which aims at providing opportunities to improve women's economic empowerment and resilience in the labor market while realizing emerging opportunities through information and communication technologies regarding also the circular economy. Without a question, 21st century is being driven by the digital economy and COVID-19 has had a double effect. On the one hand, it has accelerated the use of digital technologies, and on the other hand, it is having a devastating effect on all social and economic sectors worldwide. In this regard, I think we have to harness the wave of the digital economy and to unlock its benefits. Digital technologies have the potential to boost women's economic, political, and social empowerment, and to consolidate gender equality. In my professional field of action in Mexico, foreign trade has been an engine for economic growth, a very important tool to boost the economy and to allow it to be more inclusive. According to the World Trade Organization data, digital trade has been the fastest growing type of trade. And at the international level, we are discussing on how to update the common rules governing digital trade. At the domestic level, in the in, under secretary that I lead, innovation and inclusion are part of the pillar of our trade policy. And in our trade negotiations, we're always including gender chapters in trade agreements as an opportunity to reduce the gap and improve women participation in international trade. These chapters allow us to reduce barriers women face in trade throughout cooperation activities. Such activities allow women to participate in international trade by encouraging capacity building, promoting financial inclusion, and education. For example, the labor chapter contained in the new US-Mexico-Canada, which just became effective on July 1st, has some provisions related to the elimination of discrimination in the job and also with regards to supporting the goal of promoting equality of women in the workplace. The USMCA also contains provisions regarding cooperation activities as a result of provisions regarding development related to pay, 
capacity building and uh, skill development for women in the workplace, safety and health, and other workplace practices, including advancement of childcare and nursing mothers, prevention of gender-based workplace violence and harassment, among many others that aim at having a more inclusive economy, but also one with a vision that takes into consideration the needs and the potential of women in the economy. As part of our strategy, we are also focused on capacity building of women-owned uh, SMEs in order to allow them to have more information, better knowledge, and better skills in the enforcement and also in the use of the e-commerce platforms so that e-commerce can allow women to expand their business exports and participate in local, regional, and global supply chain. Our re most recent free trade agreements include provisions to promote innovation by supporting infrastructure, such as incubators, accelerators, and export assistance centers, enhancing greater collaboration to promote SMEs owned by underrepresented, such as women, indigenous people, youth, as well as startups and rural SMEs, exchanging best practices between the parties to improve SME access capital and loans. Easy and efficient e-commerce can also facilitate trade between emerging markets, promoting economic development and poverty reduction. However, the road towards women empowerment has to do with the fields of work that are expected to boost productivity and competitiveness in the future. For example, it has been identified that women are underrepresented in six of the eight microclusters with the highest employment growth rate. In LinkedIn, which stresses the importance of pursuing women's involvement in thriving areas of the economy, such as data and artificial intelligence, engineering, and cloud computing. In this line, I celebrate the United Nations Industrial Development Organization's effort for organizing an event like this, focused on upscaling the tools and opportunities available for women as they relate to industry and innovation. Congratulations to um, the organizers and congratulations to all of those who will benefit from this conference. Thank you, and I wish you all the best. Very much thank uh, Mrs. De La Mora for her contribution. Uh, and indeed, uh, I come to announce uh, uh, the next uh, uh, contribution which is uh, from Mrs. Sinierazzo, the Deputy General for Research and Innovation of the European Commission on behalf of Mrs. Maria Gabriel, Commissioner for Innovation, Research, Culture, Education and Youth. Esteemed colleagues, dear friends, I'm most honoured to deliver to you this message on behalf of the European Commission. Empowering women in the economy and in innovation is very close to my heart. Let me start with a story. Madifa Teroazi was born in Geneva to Algerian parents and she struggled to pay for the university. After completing her studies, she founded a successful spin-off developing therapeutic cancer vaccines. Last week, Madifa was one of the 21 women shortlisted for the final of the EU Prize for Women Innovators. She is a living proof that there is no limit to what we women can accomplish. But even today, stories like hers are still the exception, not the rule. Women make up half the world's population, but they represent only 35% of the global workforce and less than 27% of managers and business leaders. In Europe, just 16% of startups are funded, founded by women. Achieving a union of equality is one of the top priorities of the European Commission. And this is reflected in our ambitious gender equality strategy published earlier this year. Through Horizon Europe, the EU's next programme for research and innovation, we will help women to thrive as entrepreneurs with targeted measures and funding. 
Uh, the new European Innovation Fund, uh, Innovation Council, that funds breakthrough innovation in Europe, is at the forefront of this strategy. This year, we announced that at least 25% of SMEs and startups invited to interview must be women led. I'm proud that this measure, as well as others, are already attracting far more women led companies to the EIC. It has been estimated that 90% of future jobs will require digital skills. But today, young girls are two times less likely than boys to aspire to a career as an engineer, scientist or software developer. It's no surprise that women account for only 20% of ICT graduates. More women in digital jobs could, cre could create an annual 16 billion euros GDP boost for the EU as a, as a whole. As we pick ourselves up from the COVID crisis, this is a real opportunity to create a fairer and more prosperous society for everyone. The EU is committed to encourage more girls and young women to aspire to digital careers by providing opportunities through education and training. Positive role models are especially important to inspire and to attract more girls and women to science and entrepreneurship. The EU Prize for Women Innovators was created to raise awareness of the need for more female entrepreneurs. Last week, Maria Gabriel, the European Commissioner for Innovation, Research, Culture, Education and Youth, revealed the 21 incredible finalists. They are amongst the most talented and inspiring women entrepreneurs. Each of us has a part to play in closing the gender divide, overturning stereotypes and encouraging women and girls to fulfill their potential, just like Madifa. By doing this, we not only empower women's, women and girls, we move closer to achieving the 2030 Agenda and creating a better world for all of us, for men and boys, as well as women and girls. Thank you. Very much, uh, thank Mrs. Ratso on behalf of Mrs. Gabrielle, the Commissioner for Innovation, Research, Culture, Education and Youth from the European Commission for the contribution. With this, last but not least, we come to our last uh, participation uh, in this opening session uh, from Dr. Toraya Ahmed Obaid, the Chair of Women 20 of the uh, uh, G20 Presidency of Saudi Arabia. As the Chair of Women 20, it is an honor for me to participate in UNIDA's International Conference on Women in Industry and Innovation. The conference's theme of women's economic empowerment through bridging the gender gap to create greater resilience in the labor market is, in the context of COVID-19 crisis, more important than ever. With the continued uncertainty created by this crisis, there is potential to either accelerate the gender equality agenda or to hamper past progress altogether. What happens next depends on our ability to influence policymakers to prioritize gender considerations in their COVID-19 response measures, and to ensure that women are included in policymaking discussions. Women 20 is the premier platform bringing women's issues to the G20 process through policy recommendations. We are part of the G20 process, but independent from governments. Our primary objective is to ensure that the gender considerations are mainstreamed into G20 discussions and translated into G20 leaders' declaration as policies and implementation commitments that foster gender equality and women's empowerment, especially in the economic area. G20 governments are committed to the UN Sustainable Development Goals, including SDG 5 on gender equality, and to the Brisbane 25 by 25 initiative, which calls for reducing the gender gap in labor by 25% by 2025. Yet the journey towards an equitable recovery and equitable labor force is far from over. 
We agree with this conference. All W20 policy recommendations should be based on bridging the gender gap. Evidence shows that catalyzing tool for bridging the gender gap in pay, in workforce, and in access to opportunities across all sectors and industries begins with the active inclusion of women and also it is smart economics. As for the presidency of W20, the delegates decided to include inclusive decision as the fourth policy priority, along with financial, labor, and digital inclusion. To me, true change for women across all sectors can only take place when women are active participants in all aspects of the decision-making processes in both public and private spheres. The current system of decision-making in the critical areas of finance, economy, and industry is dominated by men, and thus the policies reflect their own perspectives. This becomes increasingly important as we emerge from COVID-19 crisis. Any focus on economic recovery must intrinsically build in gender, and the way to do this is through accelerating inclusive decision-making at all levels of public policy making, community, national, and international. We have called upon the G20 to immediately adopt gender responsive budgeting to ensure that the pandemic recovery measures foster a gender inclusive workforce and to implement social protection mechanisms for alternative employment models to ensure appropriate coverage for all workers in the formal and informal economy with special attention to essential workers, part-time workers, the self-employed, particularly those in low-income countries. My international experience taught me that sustainable development can only be achieved when it occurs in the context of and with the agreement of the people whose lives will be affected. Women have a wider perspective because of their various roles and responsibilities from personal to community and at work. This can only be achieved when women are sitting on the same decision-making tables and at all levels. Believe me, gender equality cannot wait. And believe me, we mean it. Thank you. I really like to thank Dr. Uh, Wade for, for her participation. And with this, in fact, we come to an end of the high level part of this morning. Uh, rather this afternoon or the evening, depending on where you are. And I really would like uh, to commend all the distinguished uh, participants and speakers in this opening session uh, for their statements, which for us, in fact, uh, are an encouraging sign of a truly global nature of the agenda of women's economic empowerment. And we saw right now the broad array of ideas and recommendations which have been outlined already. However, we cannot speak of a global agenda without mentioning the tireless efforts and dedication and support from our member states who have stood alongside of us and have responded to the challenges and opportunities for increasing women's participation in the global economy. From the tabling of gender-focused resolutions to the funding of innovative pilot projects, our member states have ensured that our mandate has continued to evolve and respond to the new contexts and so that we may accelerate our contributions to inclusive and sustainable industrial development, which truly is inclusive. We would like to particularly thank the government of Italy for their support in making this conference possible. And with over 1,200 participants from 124 countries, and I believe, in fact, we are much more than those, if I'm not mistaken, we are joined by entrepreneurs, business networks, public representatives, practitioners, and many more uh, in order to really try to bring about change in this matter. This constellation is key for the formation of a truly multi-stakeholder alliance that can take forward the hopes and aspirations of this conference and bring indeed meaningful change to women's economic empowerment. It is therefore my hope that this conference will generate innovative ideas with practical and craft actionable plans that will further enhance the contribution to women's economic empowerment. Because, and that is very true, it is not only the right thing to do, 
But as we heard from all our businesses this afternoon, it is particularly also the smart thing to do. So I really thank all of you this right now who participated in the opening, but also all of you uh, 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 in, in this conference. Please stay tuned and go with us to the next two days because we will certainly provide to you numerous solutions, which hopefully will make a change to your life and your daily business. With this, and before closing, I really would like uh, to give the floor to my colleague, Monica Carco, who will say a few words about the organization and the context of the conference. Monica, you have the floor. Many thanks, Kai. I'm really pleased, excellencies and ladies and gentlemen, I'm really pleased today to participate to the opening of this important conference, uh, which has been organized in the framework of the Technical Assistance Program, promoting women's empowerment for inclusive and sustainable industrial development in the MENA region. The program uh, started its implementation in 2015 in seven countries, Algeria, Egypt, Jordan, Lebanon, Morocco, Palestine, and Tunisia. It's a, flag, it's a UNIDO flagship project aiming at harnessing women's full potential as leaders and economic um, agent of change. The project so far has benefited 11 women business association of the region, more than 1,000 women across the region, through trainings, coaching to improve access to finance, including FDI's promotion, through participation in business forum and technical tours organized in Europe. The project has also largely contributed to improve and disseminate new analytic knowledge on the challenges faced by women entrepreneurs. A first survey was undertaken in 2017 on 1,400 women entrepreneurs to identify challenges faced by women entrepreneurs. You will find the report uploaded in the platform. A second survey in 2020, still ongoing, on 1,400 women entrepreneurs' access and use of ICTs and digital technology. You will also find a brief report uploaded on the platform. Finally, value chain gender sensitive country level mappings have been carried out in the seven countries covered by the program to identify priority value chain to boost women's economic empowerment and women's employment, top priority for all member states. Now the conference that we are launching today will bring into light ways to promote and increase participation of women in industry and innovation, particularly in this challenging time of COVID-19. The themes of the conference, adopting a gender sensitive approach in value chain development, increasing women's access and use of ICTs and digital technologies, and leveraging the opportunities created by circular economy, the three areas are of paramount importance to enhance the position of women in industry and innovation. I am sure that during the discussion, uh, the discussion of these next couple of days, we will enrich knowledge methodologies to promote women participation to the economy and we provide recommendation for action because that's what we need. Now please stay tuned as the next session is on harnessing women's led entrepreneurship and self-employment in value chain development. But I also would like to thank the dream team that is behind the scene, Zainab, Paul and Beatrice, who made it possible really to realize this first online conference for UNIDO. So Beatrice, maybe you want to say a few, uh, give a few information to the audience. Thank you, Beatrice. Hi everyone, and thank you to Mr. Betke and Ms. Carco for their words and also that of our distinguished guests. Um, we really hope that you make the most of this conference. Um, it is so much more than just a series of sessions uh, or webinars. It's allowing you in various ways and to various extents to participate, to uh, take part in community boards, virtual meetups. Um, and really, we hope that you can make the most of this and take the platform that we've provided and really take forward something and the connections, the strategies, and we wish you all the best. If you have any questions, we are constantly available um, and we will get to your questions as soon as possible. Um, in terms of, for example, remote interpretation, you can look at the conference announcements, uh, which have further details on the links that you can use to participate, to join the sessions, um, either in English, French or Arabic. And you can also visit the virtual exhibitor booths. Um, they would be more than happy to chat with you and to answer any questions that you have. And some of the booths also have incredibly interesting offers um, 
to help women entrepreneurs uh, with their businesses. So please, we hope that you make the most of this conference and thank you so much. Thank you.